Hello, uh, my name is Yujia Yan. I'm from Carl Bergen Group at MIT. Today I'm going to talk about fabrication and characterization of membrane nanogratings for electron diffraction. This work has also been presented in the electron beam lithography session in the electron, ion, and photon beam technology and nanofabrication conference in 2015. Today I'm going to focus on a uh, nanogradient per electron diffraction. So a uh, nanogradient is a periodic structure and due to the wave nature of the electron, an incoming electron beam can be diffracted into multiple beams. There are some requirements on this uh, periodic structure. So first, electron has very small wavelengths, so we need to use nanofabrication technique to make a uh, small period uh, nanogradient and also uh, the electron has to transmit through this uh, nanograting, so we need to make the structure out of a very thin membrane to make sure it is electron transmissive. There are many interesting applications of nanograting, so one of them is electron beam splitter, which is used in electron interferometer. So conventionally, people use a charged wire, charged wire to uh, separate the incoming electron beam, which is called electron biprism, and it is a wavefron division electron beam splitter. Because a nanogradient can also diffract an incoming electron beam into multiple beams, so it can also be used as electron beam, sp beam splitter, and it is a amplitude division electron beam splitter, which is favored by certain applications. Another application of the nanogradient is shaping of electron beams. So in this figure, um, we see a nanogradient with a fork defect, and we also see there are some interesting properties carried by the defective beam when an incoming beam is uh, going through this uh, structure. And this is called vor vortex beam generation, and we can see the electron wave function, uh, which shows that the defective beams are carrying a non-zero orbital angular momentum. So this structure can be used to uh, uh, generate OAM in electron beams. So uh, nanograting can be used in shaping of electron beams, hence enable novel electron microscopy, spectroscopy, and patterning techniques. And because this kind of structure impose interesting properties to the defected electron beams, this structure is also called a defective plates. I want to point out that the, the example shown in this slide is, it is effectively an uh, amplitude plate because it is made of a relatively thick platinum foil. So the platinum material either blocks the electron beam or the electron beam transmit between the uh, ribbons of this structure. So it imposes amplitude modulation to the incoming electron beam. Recently, people were more interested in a faceplate, um, which, uh, according to its name, imposes a phase modulation instead of uh, amplitude modulation to the incoming electron beam. So this slide shows some examples of faceplates made by silicon nitride membrane uh, milled by Fox ion beam. Um, there are some advantages of faceplates compared to amplitude plates. So first, because all the electrons can transmit the can transmit through the faceplates. It will give a uh, higher efficiency, so we have higher intensity and more signal-to-noise ratio in the defective beam. Also, the phase plate has more design flexibility because for an amplitude plate, it either blocks the electron beam or transmits the electron beam. But for faith phase plate, we can impose ar an arbitrary phase shape from 0 to 2 pi uh, to the incoming electron beam, so it has more uh, design flexibility. As we can see from the figures, we, it can be used to generate uh, vortex beams as shown in the figure B. It can also be used to generate high order Laguerre Gaussian beams as shown in the figure C. Uh, all the previous defective plates are made by focus ion beam. We also propose here that we can use electron beam lithography to make the phase plates um, because electron beam Lithography has higher throughput, which enables us to pattern a large area phase plates. Uh, electron beam lithography also has higher resolution than focus ion beam, and also it can be applied to a wider range of materials. So all the properties of electron beam lithography actually helps to improve the functionality of the phase plate. Sorry. In the following 
talk, I will focus on the simplest phase place, which is a binary phase grating for electrons, as shown in the schematics here. Um, the figure on the left shows the intensities of defective beams as a function of the phase shift imposed by this uh, binary phase grating. Um, and this phase shift can be estimated uh, by the equation here, which is um, just the product of a constant, which is depends on which depends on the electron energy, uh, the main inner potential, which is the material property, and uh, the thickness of the uh, binary phase grating. Uh, for example, if we have 200 keV incoming electrons, a 10 nanometer silicon nitride will gives about uh, 0.3 pi phase shift, and 10 nanometer gold will give about 0.6 pi phase shift. And we choose silicon nitride as a material to make our uh, face plate because the technique to make a thin silicon nitride membrane is well known. Uh, so we start with a commercially available silicon nitride TEM grid. Uh, it is a 10 nanometer uh, suspended silicon nitride membrane supported by a silicon frame. Uh, we directly spin coating uh, PMMA on top of the silicon nitride membrane and we do electron beam lithography and development. After that, we perform CF4 reactive ion etching to punch through holes into the second nitride membrane, and uh, we strip the PMMA resist with oxygen plasma etching. Finally, we evaporate a 10 nanometer gold film on top of the second nitride membrane uh, to reduce the charging effect and also um, to enhance the diffraction efficiency. So this figure shows a bright field TEM image of the fabricated nanogratings with 100 nanometer pitch. We can also take the fast Fourier transform of this image uh, and we can see the individual spots in the Fourier transform which corresponds to the spatial periodicity of this nanograting. However, there are some problems in the fabrication of the nanogratings. So in this slide, I show the fabricated nanogratings with various uh, few factors. So we keep the pitch of all the gratings the same, uh, but we vary the width of the second nitride ribbon, hence we change the few factors. And we can see that when we get to a small few factor, um, or equivalently a very narrow second nitride ribbon, we observe some uh, sticking problems uh, in the fabricated uh, nano gratings. We also see exactly the same problems when we try to fabricate a large area grating. As you can see, for a small area grating, everything looks good. But when we, uh, when we scale up the area covered by this grating, we can observe a lot of sticking problems. So one possible explanation of the skidding problem is the resist collapse, which is commonly observed in electron beam lithography. So we want to identify if this is a problem. Uh, and we try to look at the resist pattern. So after we do electron beam lithography and development, we uh, gold coated the PMMA resist to look at the resist pattern. To our surprise, the resist pattern looks pretty good and there is no sticking problem associated with it. This figure shows a, a small field factor uh, grating uh, where there is uh, no sticking problem. And also, we did not observe any sticking problem in a large area grating. So this slide show, shows the TM image of a large area grating with no sticking problem. So therefore, uh, we come to the conclusion that a sticking problem occurs during or after reactive ion etching. So one possible explanation is that uh, during the fabrication process, there could be some forces applied to the uh, second nitride ribbon or the grating lines. It can be a capillary force or electric static force. Uh, so when this force applied to the second nitride ribbon, it will deform and the nearest uh, second nitride ribbons will become a cluster and hence give rise to the sticking problems. The fact that a uh, narrow ribbon is more susceptible to uh, the sticking problem um, also confirms this explanation because a wider or a fatter uh, second nitride beam will be more stiffer and it will have less deformation under the same force. So uh, it is less likely to have this uh, sticking problem. In order to solve the sticking problem, we moved from one dimensional light grating to a two dimensional mesh grating as shown in this figure. Uh, we make a square lattice two dimensional mesh uh, grating with uh, various pitches. We test this uh, design 
uh, by uh, changing the field factors. So we fabricate mesh gratings with various uh, line weights and we do not observe any sticking problems. And also uh, we pattern the mesh grating with large area and we, again, we do not observe any sticking problem. So we are able to uh, solve the sticking problem by uh, moving to this two-dimensional mesh grating. And finally, we're able to reach a large area mesh grating with a 100 micron area, as shown in this figure. So our next step is to characterize this mesh grating. And first, we try TEM diffraction. So this is normal diffraction mode, the so-called selective area diffraction in the TEM. Uh, and the two images are taken uh, by Techni TEM working at different acceleration voltage, 80 kV for the left figure and 20 kV for the right figure. We can observe a square lattice, pat a square lattice diffraction pattern that uh, corresponds to the square lattice two-dimensional mesh grating. We are also able uh, to do a high resolution diffraction uh, by this uh, high dispersion diffraction mode. So in this mode, we get a much higher camera lens and has much higher uh, uh, magnification on the diffraction. So we also measure the distance between the spots in the diffraction pattern, which is 0.02 inverse nanometer, which corresponds to the 50 nanometer pitch over uh, fabricated mesh grating. We also characterize our mesh grating in the SEM uh, with the idea diffractive imaging uh, proposed by McMorrin. The idea is showing this schematics. Uh, it is a SEM column which produces a focused electron beam and if we insert uh, nano gratings in the uh, path of the beam, we can generate a multiple diffractive focused beam instead of one. So when we use these multiple beams to image a single isolated wire target, instead of getting one single image, we can get multiple images of the wire. We use diffractive imaging to observe the thin nanoparticles shown here with various diameters. Uh, we insert this fabricated mesh grating in the path of the electron beam. And this is what it looks like. Uh, the bright region is the suspended second nitrogen membrane where we fabricate our uh, uh, mesh gratings. And the electron beam transmits through this uh, mesh and go to the uh, thin nanoparticles. If we zoom in in the image of the thin nanoparticles, we can see multiple images superimposed on each other, uh, which confirms that uh, it is a defective imaging. And finally, uh, we took a fast Fourier transform of the image, uh, so we can see a square lattice corresponding to the diffraction of the nano grating. So to conclude, uh, we fabricate nanostructures in a freestanding, very ultra-thin silicon nitride membrane with um, large area, high density, um, high resolution, and minimal number of defects. Uh, we demonstrated uh, these uh, fabricated nanostructure or nano gratings can be used in electron optics uh, as a defective phase grating, and we also demonstrated it can be used as a beam switcher by using the SEM defective imaging. Uh, we also point out that it could be used as other application in the electron optics, such as a zone plate lens or uh, to shape the electron beams. I, I also want to say there are many other applications besides electron optics that can benefit from exactly the same structures, and these applications range from uh, uh, single molecule filtration, separation sensing, to uh, plasmatic and photonic devices. Finally, I want to acknowledge our sponsor, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, uh, and our collaborators, uh, Peter Curry Group, uh, Mauro Kasovich Group, and Peter Homhoff Group. Thank you very much for your attention.